it's getting late, but like, you know, there, there's time for one more episode. Okay, well, just, just one more. It's getting brighter, isn't it? That's right, today we will be looking at the secret sauce behind those animes, as in, what is the deal with bingeable anime? The ones where you're watching, thinking you're merely gonna watch like two episodes, only to proceed to merely watch two entire seasons. But the degree to which that applies to you is unimportant, as what separates these bingeable anime applies in a much broader sense than just the anime themselves. It is something fundamental to our human nature, society, and the weeb life cycle as we know it. But before that, be sure to- Okay, so bingeable anime. They exist, yet there are a lot of existing things that go into anime, such as the story, entertainment value, animation, etc. Whether or not you had Taco Bell that day, and overarching deeper themes that all contribute to the watching experience. Clearly these things do matter, as when we say a show is good, these are generally what we point to. However, good shows are not necessarily the same thing as bingeable ones, as I am sure you have experienced wanting to watch some anime that your friend recommends that they say is 10 out of 10 and you like too, yet will still take three months to get through only like 13, 20 minute episodes. That example assumes you have friends. There is a difference between good and bingeable. So what is this difference? Well, obviously personal preference is what you would say if you are cringe, but as luck would have it, I am majorly cringe, which is why I will first represent this <clears throat> uh, dichotomy in a two by two matrix political compass thing. Ideally, we want our anime to be here in the top right corner, including things like Spy Family, Attack on Titan, Violet Evergarden, and the majority of anime people actually recommend. Then in the bottom left are the don't touch with 10 foot pole anime, neither bingeable nor good, requiring a certain level of brain damage to actually watch. Fortunately, I have that, so in that goes mostly shitty isekai, domestic girlfriend, and some more other stuff we will not be getting to. That leaves the two other categories, bad bingeable anime and good not bingeable anime, the fun categories, home of hot takes and unpopular opinions. And it is these anime that I want to focus on, because we need these hot takes to fuel the peak entertainment of grassless internet warfare, as well as being the key categories where bingeable is separated from just being quote, good. Take No Game No Life, for example. Is it good? Well, no, it's not. And while you could say that it does have a good plot, that isn't the kind I'm talking about. See, despite this anime getting a bad rep among anime and even isekai connoisseurs, I stand my ground on this one. Yeah, I probably have brain damage. Yeah, this, this is completely not sus, guys. But yeah, I've seen it like four times and I'd fucking do it again. Incredibly bingeable anime, at least for me. And to understand this, I will start by bringing in a related concept called, quote, it's so bad that it's good. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe not. But in my opinion, which is entirely unbiased, no Game No Life is the perfect bad anime. Not only does it manage to lump in some of the tropes of generic isekai and have multiple episodes where almost the entire thing is fan service, but it also manages to do it in the most unique acid trip hypersaturated art style, all while sprinkling in some actually good plot behind the plot with satisfying payoffs accompanied by an S tier soundtrack, which unfortunately I cannot play. What I mean is to illustrate the peak comedy of knowing that someone actually made this, that we do in fact live in that timeline. And even though you know it's bad, you can't stop watching. Watching. Or in other words, it's so bad that it's good is another way of saying that this anime should be bad, but I binged the whole thing. Now, where is the similarity between that and something like Violet Evergarden, which falls in the other category of being good and also very bingeable? Well, after thinking about this for a hot minute, I now believe I have the answer. Novelty. Specifically, how our experience of it plays into anime. If you think about it, people like to watch things because they are interesting. Not just watch things, but do things that are interesting. And generally, the most interesting things in life are the novel and new experiences. If we apply that principle to our current predicament, then it is the animes that give a novel and new experience that are the bingeable ones, which is why it is normal for people to binge a bunch of anime when they first start, as almost every show feels distinctly different. But then as we continue in the quote, typical weeb life cycle, that magic ability to binge watch anime will almost always fade, because in large part, as cliche as it sounds, it really does start to get old. Novelty, or a novelty, also means unique and special, which is entirely subjective, but when you go back to rewatch those unique and special animes, that also may be because it is different from everything you watched before and importantly after that, and thus is still very bingeable. So as time goes on, the shows that give the same initial level of emotional investment and ability to turn 20 minutes into two becomes harder and harder to come by, which is where many people begin considering several different options, such as doing literally anything else, watching anime clips with subway surfers in the background, and very infrequently, there are those that decide to finally go outside and touch 
grass. Just kidding, grass is a government conspiracy to get us to pay taxes. Ironically though, while new and unique things are interesting, we also become less likely to try those new things over time. In many ways, we fear new things because they are unfamiliar. With anime, as people get more comfortable with specific types of shows, we get stuck in specific genres, and thus lead us to find less anime to be bingeable and is why the first animes that you recommend to people are extremely important. My advice to you if you're trying to get friends into anime is to really keep in mind this fact, as the first ones will determine their taste in the future. And if you, uh, you know, if they end up having bad taste, then it is, it is your fault. You idiot. Okay, probably not, but point being is that the principle of novelty in anime is crucial to how we choose, watch, and recall it, and really for a lot of stuff in real life too. Now, let's look back at the cringe 2x2 Matrix political compass thing. What can we make of this? Well, other than that we as a society should stop making these, it is that as long as the anime was good or was fun and interesting to watch, then you do whatever you want. Stop listening to those normies insulting your bad taste, and go out there and watch some weird ass anime that you wouldn't normally watch, because it might be the new best anime of all time you just didn't know about. And you know what? But don't stop there. Go out there and go do the thing you've been putting off for the past year, but I've been too afraid to do it. I'm speaking from experience, okay? Do it, all right? Trust me, let the intrusive thoughts win. Do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Let the intrusive thoughts come on, come on, go, 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 okay. Okay, maybe not all the intrusive thoughts, okay? Okay, maybe not all of them, okay? Actually, I'm, I'm actually not, I'm actually not liable for any damage. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. It is I, Mr. Valentine, signing out. Be sure to like, and even possibly subscribe. That was cringe. No clue when this will come out. Maybe, maybe see you, see you next, next year, maybe? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, that'll do it. Anyways, uh, I'm going to go watch for you right now. Have a great day, y'all. Bye.